Dear friends, welcome at the knowledge sharing program of Textile Art Biennial BN 2023. Um, we will explore the textile spaces, textile production spaces, and get to know international and Slovene examples. So how are the textile spaces organized? Uh, what uh, community development strategies do they have? What is their specific focus? And um, also how do they finance their activities? Um, we'll see if there's a positive correlation between the access to the textile production spaces and textile art in one city. And uh, today it is a big pleasure. We will have six uh, participants um, with us is Alessandra from, from Lotto Zero Prato, Mary Liz from Studio Labus, uh, Margaret from Iceland Textile Center, Kati from Creative Center Kreativnice, uh, Lucia from Center Ruk, and Margarita from Desitnica uh, from Kran, where also the biennial is from. Uh, we will start uh, with uh, Lotto Zero. So each of the uh, participants will have approximately 10 minutes to present their space and then we will have a little uh, discussion at the end so bear with us i think we're going to have um, a lovely knowledge sharing uh, program uh, alessandra tempesti hi so nice to meet you um, i will do a short introduction so lotto zero is the center for uh, textile design art and also culture uh, with an open laboratory for textile uh, experimentation a shared studio space and exhibition area it's based in prato italy so um again thank you for being here it's uh, my you, you're my um idol like the, the the space that you're running it's super fantastic i know it for many years and we're really really looking forward to get to know your place better thank you <laughs> thank you for the invitation i'm really happy to be part of the panel to exchange uh, ideas and views about textile and i'm really excited to visit the Vienna this summer you're very welcome. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to share my screen, right? Yes, please. Uh, I think you need to let me be able to share the screen. Gregor, can you allow? Oh, yes, yes, uh, working on it. OK, could you try now? Yes, it started. So I'm uh, Alessandra Tempesti and I work uh, at Lotto Zero as a curator and I have been part of the team uh, since the, um, the beginning of uh, the, the story of Lotto Zero, which was founded in 2016 uh, in Prato, uh, which is uh, one of the most important textile district, district of Europe. And uh, Lotto Zero is a completely independent space. Uh, it was founded and created by two sisters um, from Bolzano, so not um, originally from, from the city of Prato, who inherited this space from uh, their grandfather. Uh, it was originally, it was uh, a warehouse for food from the 50s, uh, located in a former industrial area of the city. Um, and they refurbished the space with this uh, idea and this dream to, to transform it in a space for uh, dedicated to textiles or a center for textile design, art and culture. And the connection with the city is extremely important. It's fundamental, I would say. Uh, Lotto Zero, um, it, um, it couldn't exist if uh, it uh, it weren't based in in Prato, uh, which is a, a very important textile district. So this, I would say, is the most important aspect of the space. So the the relationship 
with the with the city with its uh, history tradition uh, in, linked to textile uh, and with its heritage so the idea for the beginning was to create a space who could attract creative from also from abroad from all over the world in order to connect them to the um, textile company of the city and to uh, initiate a, an exchange, a creative exchange between the, um, the knowledge, the skill, the technical skills of the area in this sector and the, uh, the creativity of this um, artists and designers from ab abroad. So since the beginning, it was extremely important to research. So the founders, uh, uh, Tessa and Ariana, they, especially in the before founding Lotto Zero, they traveled a lot also all around Europe in order to um, know more about this kind of spaces. And I have to say that in Italy, we are the, the only one uh, especially dedicated to textile, but also to discover people, artists involved in textile art and textile design. So this is a view of the city, which is uh, also a medieval city, which this uh, history connected to the textile, which dates back to the Middle Ages, actually. and. Uh, um, and now, nowadays, it counts uh, uh, around 7,000 companies active in fashion and textile. So it's a extremely rich uh, uh, area, which also have this tradition connected to the uh, regeneration of wool, which is something uh, typically from Prato. So the um, this uh, technique of um, transforming uh, rugs from old garments in, uh, in new uh, fibers, uh, which can, can become a new fabric. So this is a um, traditional uh, uh, textile technique uh, developed in Prato in the past and still active, still very important. So here you can have a look at the first step of the regeneration of the wool when this ragman um, needs to select the, the rags and divide them from, um, for color. And then they, with some carding machine, they can be transformed them in um, a, a new fiber and then a new thread and a new fabric. So our space is a 400 meter square meter space uh, divided in an area for co-working, a textile laboratory, an exhibition space, which we call Kunstalle, and a, also a library, a small library, with, uh, where I am, actually am now. And um, so I would say that uh, so everything it's um, in the same place it, it's not so big and everything is connected the textile lab it's the core of the space uh, because this is the area where where we can experiment uh, develop new prototype experiment with manual techniques so we have a screen printing table we have knitting machines sewing machines we have an, air, an area for dyeing. We have some looms of different sides. We have a digital embroidery machine, a, a tafting station. Um, and uh, the lab is open to everyone. So also the people from the area can access and rent a space for one day or one week or more. But it's especially this, the place where artists and designers in residency can work. And so where we develop our own project uh, projects, which then we can exhibit in the Kunstale area, uh, which is at the entrance of the space. So while this is the entrance in, the, in that small uh, room, it's, it's the library, which originally was the office of this warehouse. 
And this, I'm coming back again, this is the big area of the space. So everything is connected and closed and we also are very flexible with the space. Sometimes we transform it according to our needs. Um, so in the, in the Kunsthalle, we present the results of the residencies, sometimes proper exhibition, sometimes uh, uh, just the, the, um, some small research developed at the end of the residency. It depends because uh, I have to say that since we are a completely independent space, we do not receive any public fundings. We are really struggling to develop a, a pro proper artistic program in advance. So we are also very flexible in planning events, in planning um, um, open studios after the residencies. Everything happen, happens very quickly, very fast. Uh, even if uh, uh, for two years now, we have also started to work on a European project, uh, uh, European funded projects. So this allow us to have a more long-term plan planning, but we also work uh, like this very fast. And the residencies are also um, a core activity of uh, Lotto Zero. Here you can see some pics from the, um, the residency by Susanna Inglada from last year. She's a Spanish artist based in uh, Amsterdam. And she um, managed to come uh, thanks to a funding from the Mondrian Foundation because our residencies all, always require a fee. So we help artists with invitation letter to find for um, to, to obtain, uh, uh, to get fundings in order to be able to come and stay with us. We have a private apartment just over the building so they can um, stay very close to the studio and work uh, day and night. And uh, Lotto Zero is both a, a, a cultural hub and a design office. So we try to develop this different activity uh, in parallel. So we have a, a design office which offers a series of um, um, services and consultancies in the textile fields for a, a different range of targets from companies, architects, uh, um, institutions. Everyone needs a, um, professional consult consultancies in the textile mm -hmm. texture. Uh, also because we are really um, creating a um, big and large network of connection with all the companies of the area. So we are really able to help everyone to develop, develop their project, to find the right uh, um, partners, professional uh, business partners. Uh, one of our services, in fact, is organize tours into the textile district. So in order to create this link between the designers, fashion brands and the companies. Um, we organize a variety of uh, events, uh, sometimes also talk. Uh, this was a talk organized during the Fashion Revolution Weeks. Um, to which we took part uh, uh, three years in a, in a row, or always organizing some events in order to sensibilize people to um, a more slow fashion and sustainable fashion, which is, of course, one of our um, value. And um, uh, I would like just to... Um, say a few words about one of our um, last project, which, which is an online project. It's called Textile Culture Net. So starting from 2020, during the COVID, we created this uh, network uh, between other institutions um, 
work into this uh, field. Uh, I'm sure you, you already know all of them. So we created this textile culture net uh, during the COVID. So in order to be connected in a period where we were all forced to work from distance, where it was extremely difficult to de develop projects. So at the beginning, this was uh, most of all a, a way to to create a connection between us, to get to know each other, to get to know how we work um, inside our institution. So especially it was created to exchange uh, knowledge between us. And since then we started to develop a series of online exhibition on Instagram uh, because we are committed both into textile art and textile design. This is also a, um, the main characteristic of uh, the activity of Lotto Zero. So in this case, we organized the um, exhibition, um, textile art exhibition, who, uh, are public, which are published on our Instagram channels. And uh, this year we managed to win um, if, um, funding from the, European um, uh, plat uh, platform. So we are developing more the project, especially as regards its uh, digital strategy. So I invite you to, to check on our Instagram these um, particular um, exhibitions, which are completely online. And, uh, and this was also a way to let you know um, how we reacted, what we tried to do during the, the COVID. So I will stop here because I think that the, the time uh, is running very fast, but um, I'm available for uh, your questions at, at the end of the um, presentations. Thank so, you, Alessandra. I, I forgot the, the last uh, slide was that just to, to give you an idea of who we are. And actually uh, we became five last October. So uh, one, uh, one of us is missing in, the, in this picture, but we are all five um, women. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alessandra. Um... During your presentation, a few of the questions, of course, popped up, and I will ask them at the uh, end, um, at the uh, when we're going to have a discussion uh, with all the spaces. So we're continuing uh, further on. Um, Kati from Kreativnice will join us. Kati is from Škofja Luka. It is one of the um, cities that also Biennial, uh, our Biennial is in, and. Uh, I think Škofja Luka had made such a great progress in terms of um, textile art from craft uh, towards art in all of the senses of the art. It's really amazing how a little city can be connected to the textile heritage and kind of present its contemporary ideas. So Contemporary Textile uh, Hub Kreativnice is a creative and working space uh, and an exhibition and say studio as well. Um, they have focus um, on the natural materials, uh, handmade production, the connection of individual artists uh, and their finding and trying to find synergies between all of them and exchanging their practices. So I invite you, Kati, hi. Hello, hi. To make your presentation now. Thank you for mm -hmm. being with us. I will just um, share my screen. Can you see it? Yes. Perfect. Hope that this goes on the full screen. Okay. Uh, Zala, thank you for inviting us uh, that uh, we have the opportunity to present what we do. And of course, hello to everybody. Uh, I'm looking forward to also hear uh, all other practices. So as uh, Zala mentioned, um, I'm Kati Sekirnik. And I'm the coordinator of uh, textile uh, hub Kreativnice, uh, which operates uh, um, in the development agency Tora in Škofja Luka, 
little town uh, that is uh, based in Gorinska region. Uh, just to put us in the context, I would just like to um, to present where we are on the map. So Shkupeluka, uh, it's a little town um, in the center of this area that you okay, can see. I'm so sorry. I don't think the presentation is running. We just see all the presentation. Oh, so maybe because I, I see my full screen, so maybe I can do it again. Sorry. I don't know what's going on. I'm really sorry for this. No, don't worry, don't worry. But uh, I really don't know what, what uh, the problem is. Maybe I can try with the PDF form. Maybe it would be better. Can you see it? Yes, we see the first slide. Okay. Um... And now do you see full screen? Yes, now we see the full screen. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> Can you go okay, to sorry. the uh, so second I'm... slide? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, we see the Shkofi Aloka, thank you. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, when we talk about uh, textile heritage and uh, contemporary uh, activities connected to textiles, and crafts, um, I always show this picture of our town. So as you can see on the picture, we have three uh, main architectural elements, let's say. Uh, so you can see the castle, which is the um, prizing bishop -y, um, um, symbol. Then we have this church, the tower of it. And lastly, uh, here you can see the chimney. Uh, this is the former, um, um, factory of uh, hat production, uh, and this is the symbol of the um, rich heritage of textiles and crafts that is based in Shkufia Luka from the medieval times. Uh, so um, this whole area has strong uh, tradition of linen production and weaving, felting, and uh, textile dyeing, especially blueprints, uh, and uh, from the from the this craft medieval tradition, of course, it develops in the industry, which, as in many countries, uh, then in 20th century, stops the production. And as a cycle now, these uh, skills and knowledge connected with textiles are again reviving, and especially in sense of um, sustainable uh, textile designs. Uh, and uh, individual designers that are based in the area and still continue this work. So this is, uh, I believe, important to, to put the Shkofia Luka in the context of the uh, textile heritage. Um, the beginnings of our um, textile hub is actually connected with European projects. Uh, we were invited uh, from the BSP Kran Regional Development Agency to collaborate in one of the projects uh, that dealt with uh, industrial heritage connected with creativity and developing CCI sector. Uh, and uh, because in Shkofia Luka, these teams are very uh, important, we took part and um, this pilot action that we uh, developed within the project gave us, gave us the opportunity uh, to create, to have funds, of course, in the first place, and then to get opportunity to have time and uh, the, the space to connect um, uh, existing textile designers uh, and to create space uh, for collective work and uh, call, uh, knowledge sharing connected with textiles. 
So here you can see, uh, this is our space uh, in the lower square of Shkufeluka uh, in the town center. And the space, uh, it's importantly uh, based next to this factory that I presented before. So it's also this physical connection with the rich textile uh, past. Uh, but anyway, uh, our space, uh, I'm also here now, um, is um, a little smaller than uh, Lotta Zera presented before. Uh, when we started, uh, this space is, um, is uh, owned by municipality of Skopje Luka. So uh, we connected with the municipality and this is the publicly funded space. Um, the, um, it's big, uh, it was big, uh, uh, 50 square meters. And just in May, we finally got um, additional space. Uh, and now we operate in uh, approximately 100 square meters of space. But anyway, in this little space, we can say we were uh, doing a lot of uh, um, activities. Uh, as Zala already said, we connect local designers and at the same time, this is a working space. Uh, so everything uh, is movable and uh, it can be adjusted to the needs of the concrete projects that are going on. And at the same time, this is the exhibition and the sales studio. So um, participating and guest um, designers can have the opportunity to present they work and of course to sell their production, um, textile production. Um, in connection with the rich heritage um, uh, tradition, the emphasis is of course made on the natural materials, the traditional skills and techniques that are upgraded with contemporary design. And um, since uh, different artisans and uh, uh, designers work together, of course, the finding synergies and looking to common projects is very, very important. Uh, so currently in the in the space, uh, there are four um, uh, designers, textile designers working. Uh, as mentioned, this is their, in the first place, this is their working space. So we have uh, Silva Horvat, she's the master of weaving. She also uh, worked in the um, textile industry, but uh, most of her professional life, she was freelance artist and um, uh, all the her looms are here in the center and this is her studio. Uh, Lily Panther, she's the designer. Um, currently she's uh, researching and um, working mostly with natural dyeing of the textile uh, fibers. Uh, and she also is um, trying to revive this blueprint, blueprint technique that is uh, very traditional for the area. Uh, then Anja Musak, um, she's the master of felting. Uh, the, this traditional ancient technique uh, is uh, upgraded with um, uh, new techniques, new approaches, and of course, uh, designs. So her, her uh, felting is... Um, let's say, uh, um, new and more interesting uh, that it's like this traditional felting technique. And uh, uh, Nina vastel Stefe, she's also a textile designer and she creates the um, interior textiles, uh, the home textiles, uh, and she focuses on kilting and uh, hand sewing and uh, printing. So these are the our current members. Uh, and uh, in space, they they uh, they create uh, their uh, own projects. And uh, what is uh, very important um, to say about the what is the the meaning of this space and how the individual work can be upgraded is um, uh, this. So, uh, as I mentioned, we uh, operated in really small space. And um, in 2020 and 2021, we rented uh, one room next door. So we uh, needed the actual door to, to separate these different spaces. And um, we thought uh, not to create or not to put there 
this um, usual door, but we said, okay, we are textile production. We should do something connected with textiles. So we decided to, to create this um, textile wall uh, that could be uh, also the art piece at the same time. And this piece could move around and also present what the aim of the uh, production, what the aim of the creative hub is. Uh, it's interesting, so um, uh, sometimes the lack of the space is really uh, frustration because you cannot do everything what you want and all the activities that are planned, but at the same time, uh, it gave us the opportunity to think differently, to find different solutions, and uh, to, to think and research what uh, can also be done. And at the same time, in this story, then BN happened in 2021. And um, when we started this uh, textile wall, uh, the call for the BN uh, was open. And also the, the team of BN uh, was really the same that we started to develop the concept of this art piece. So we applied and then the forest happened. This uh, first big scale piece uh, that uh, the textile members of the hub uh, created. And during this process of creating this big scale uh, textile installation, let's say, we discovered that this process is exactly what we want to do here. Uh, that uh, this is the um, to give space and opportunity for masters and uh, individual designers to intertwine to uh, inspire each other with different uh, textile techniques and to create some art pieces that are put in the public spaces and that they open also public debates uh, or themes that are um, uh, that are currently um, intriguing us. So uh, all these pieces that are um, created and I will present also in the later slides. Uh, are made for the public spaces and deals with the uh, social or environmental issues that are uh, currently here and uh, that also individual artists are um, dealing with and researching. So this is the forest. Um, it's traveled around and uh, now it's also here behind me. Um, also, when we put it out and uh, when we put it on the rain, the sun, uh, you know, the textiles, then it of course changes. But this is also the message that we want to give. Um, everything is um, cycling, everything is, uh, uh, it's not internal, so it changes and this is our life uh, and also life of textiles and the heritage. Uh, then another big scale uh, textile installation was created for BN. In 2021, this is river. Uh, it also traveled around. And uh, last year, uh, we present we created the the piece uh, soil seed. Um, it's one of the themes that are uh, also very interested for uh, by the by the individual designers. Uh, so the whole process from the sketches from the the, um, developing the concepts uh, from the textiles, um, actual manufacturing uh, is uh, common work and uh, is, um, uh, of course, produced together. Uh, this is the, the final resort and, uh, result, and we collaborated with the uh, Shkofia Luka Museum and uh, we uh, exhibited this piece uh, in the garden of the museum last year. Um, as mentioned, uh, the space is not just a, the, just a production space, but we also organize different events from the um, artist exhibition uh, talks, presentations, uh, but with everything that we do, we are connected with physical space. So um, we also go out from the hub to the little squares that are around uh, the textile hub and we invite um, the um, other textile uh, communities, designers, and of course, also lo local community, which is for us very important. 
So here you can see some of the um, um, uh, pictures from the uh, event. And uh, also one concept of event that uh, we started, it's a common table, uh, it's the community picnic that we organize each year and we invite locals and uh, of course visitors from, ad from abroad. Um, the common table is prepared uh, and uh, we have this community event, let's say. Uh, and uh, as important as uh, textile community is, is also to, um, uh, to have a dialogue with local community also. And of course, tourists when they visit in the summertime. Um, uh, today at seven, we are opening our completely new piece that was uh, created for BN 2023. Um, it's in Yesenice, so we are really looking forward for this evening to open and present uh, what previous months were was uh, uh, going on here in our textile hub. Uh, it, the piece is called Universe of Sun, of Suns, uh, and it's um, actually five different pieces. One is uh, common work, collaborative work, and uh, four individual pieces that all the members created. So um, yeah, this is, uh, we are opening this tonight. And um, um, yeah, that, that's it. Uh, that was the short uh, presentation of our textile hub, Kreativnice from Skofia Luka. Thank you so much, Kati. Um, it's really a great honor to be hearing that a lot of things changed um, since Bien came into our cities. Uh, so this is really lovely to hear. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation. I hope you can um, stay uh, till the discussion. I have also a few questions that I would like to ask. Um, and yes, we are all really looking forward to the uh, today's evening where we're going to open this amazing um, thing that you have done um, in Yesenice, in the old industrial town that needed a little bit of a soft textile touch. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, so we're moving forward. We're going to the north, to the Iceland. Um, so the Icelandic Textile Center um, opened a textile lab in 2021. And this maker space is located just within the walking distance uh, from this main textile center. It's open for every, everyone interested in working with te textiles. So the craftsmen, students, artists, and scholars. Uh, with us is Margaret, Katrin. Hi, Margaret. Hi. Hi, thank you so much for being with us. How, how is Iceland? Um, it's nice. It's a bit rainy, but it's really nice. Okay, great. <laughs> so it's very similar to Slovenia. It's also raining yeah. here. Um, okay, let's start. Please, we are really, really eager to hear what uh, your space okay. looks like. Okay, I'm just gonna do like this and this. And there we go. And then, so can you see this? Yes. Great. Yes, so, uh, oh, oh, I did everything. There we go. Okay, so my name is uh, Margit Katrin Guttormsdóttir and I work as the lab uh, manager at the Icelandic Textile Center. And I am going to present the work that we do here at the Icelandic Textile Center and how our textile creative hub has kind of developed and grown over the past years. Um, and we are, like you said, placed in Blöndos, the northwestern region of Iceland. And we work as a creative hub and maker space, but we also um, have also residency for textile artists. Um, and then we also take part in this uh, Centrino project, which is a European project on the research and innovation program, Horizon 2020, and have been a part of that the last, but well, we started in 2022, now 2020. And um, that uh, project has actually enabled us to make our textile lab into reality. And I think I'm just gonna show you a video that really explains it 
uh, really well. So let me know if you can hear it. Introducing the Blundos Pilot. Our mission is to develop the Icelandic Textile Center as a makerspace, where traditional handcrafts and 21st century skills come together. We are located in Northwest Iceland, in Heritage Building Kvenaskolen, a former women's school. In May 2021, we opened the Textile Lab, where designers, makers and scholars have access to digital textile equipment not available anywhere else in the country. Northwest Iceland is a sheep farming region. Over 90% of the country's wool is processed at the East Tex wool washery in Blundors. We know that there are many opportunities for rural development in Iceland as a whole that lie within textiles, small-scale manufacturing and the use of local resources. Within the framework of Centrino, we want to build a bridge between traditional handcrafts and digital textiles, using heritage as a source of knowledge and inspiration. Our pilot team includes researchers from the University of Iceland looking at aspects of gender issues surrounding textiles in Iceland the decrease in manufacturing and decay of industrial heritage. On the agenda now are vocational training and workshops for a wide target audience, from sheep farmers to fashion designers. Next steps are exploring e- and biotextiles and creating a textile cluster in the region. So this is kind of a, a good insight into our work here. Um, but I assume, oh, there we go. But yes, we opened the textile lab in uh, May, tw uh, 21st of May, 2021. And it was actually when COVID was still present in our community. So the participation of local community was pretty slow at first, but it has uh, gradually grown since. Um, and you could maybe see also in the video, everyone was still wearing masks. Um, but the space is big and it has three different working spaces. So one is like this lecture and computer space where we usually host the artist talks for artist residents here, but also other lectures. And the other two are more working uh, spaces for the equipment that is available here. And up to 15 people can work in the space at a time. So everyone feels comfortable and have their own space. Um, but the equipment that we have at the lab are all um, a state-of-the-art textile equipment that focus uh, on technology and textile innovation. So we're kind of looking at what is happening worldwide in textile and material design fields. And this is kind of including a, a TC2 digital weaving loom you can see at the top corner here. Um, it also has a dry felt loom, a digital embroidery machine, digital knitting machine called Nicterate, which you can see over here. And we also have a tufting machines and even a 3D printer. And everything, all of these machines, we work in relation to textiles. Um, but all machines um, kind of where we want to bridge this knowledge between our heritage and innovation. And we emphasize on using research, uh, using and researching local materials such as wool, fish leather, and seaweed. But um, our community is pretty broad since we both host workshops on open weekends for the local community here in Blöntos and, and around. Um, and we do that to increase knowledge and raise awareness on topics such as textile waste, circular economy, sustainability, and um, the potential of textile innovation. Um, and then introducing electronic textiles and biomaterials even. But we also have good connection with, uh, with schools on all levels. Um, so we invite um, students at the local elementary school here uh, to learn new methods of working with textiles, showing them how we can laser cut into them and, and even like uh, use waste, waste uh, material and felt them together. But then we also do vocational training with students in high school and universities in Iceland, but also in um, from other countries. And um, artists at the O's residency here, which is just placed right next door, they also come here to the lab daily uh, 
to use the equipment, um, either to work on personal projects that they are still working here at here for the month that they stay, or it, it's just to, to learn new things because um, they can then bring that with them to other places. And the last years we've also collaborated in projects with designers and entrepreneurs um, who are researching new ways of working with textile waste uh, or making new textile machines or even material design. So here you can see a um, project from Hanna Dies, who is an Icelandic designer, and she was looking into how she could um, use the, the kind of the B, um, what do you say, B section of wool, because it's always put into these kind of columns and it's made beautiful, beautiful uh, pieces. But makerspace culture in Iceland is really big and we are a part of the FabLab Iceland community. And there are over 11 makerspaces uh, all around Iceland that give people this opportunity to gain new skills and knowledge. Um, but we are the only uh, lab that kind of emphasizes or specializes in textiles. And we also kind of made that even more when we hosted uh, Fabric Academy this winter from 2022 to 2023, where participants could gain even more knowledge and understanding of, of kind of the development of textile innovation um, around the world. Um, so we had we had four participation participants um, that took part in that, and that has really left us um, pretty. We have a bag full of, of new knowledge right now. Um, but yeah, since the opening, the Creative Hub, um, we have been supported by national funds uh, and funds from the Centrino project. Um, so we have been able to um, have schools and other research projects work at the, at the Creative Hub free of charge. And now we're waiting for some funding from from the government, but this has kind of um, made us be able to have um, people access the lab free or with very low cost. And we really hope we can continue that uh, in the future. But yes, thank you. Thank you, Margaret Katrin. Oh, good to be here. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, for your presentation, it's amazing how uh, what you're doing in Iceland. Uh, it's just great, and that you're so connected still with the um, crafts and uh, every every aspect of textile that was there um, even before. Uh, so yeah, also a few few questions in my mind already. Um, we're going back to Slovenia. We're actually going to Kran, where the um, exhibition, uh, the biennial exhibition is mainly presented with the main venues. Uh, so from Kran, there is also uh, Margarita Vukčalic, who is uh, who was running the space Ethnogaleria de Sitnica for many years. Uh, she's a textile designer and a quilting teacher from Slovenia, and she still has every year uh, a school, a little uh, patchwork school. So we're going to talk um, about patchwork a little bit with you, Margareta. Please present um, your work. Thank you for being with us. Hello. Thank you for the invitation. And I uh, prepared uh, also a, a share screen for that. Okay. I hope you see everything. It's okay. Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. Oh. Ste pritisnili ta zeleni gum? Ja, šerski. Evo, zdaj pa zatenje. Now we see it, thank you. It's okay, no. Okay, um, so I see the two, the others. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry to disturb you. Mogoče samo kliknili full screen desno? 
Imate pa direktna prezentaciji, desno, čisto desno v kotu. Desno. Eno tako malo pred minusom, ki sta od minusa do plusa. Pred minusom. Samo minus tukaj. Pred minusom je ena mala ikonica. Ne. Lahko greste pa kar v v meni. Samo mečka. Yeah, I'm not very familiar with the, this. Yeah, no problem. We'll yeah. figure it out. No, I don't know how to. Um, I'm seeing all the screen, so I don't know what is the problem. You're seeing the full screen? Yes, here, at my. Uh... Mm -hmm. Ok, lahko pa mogoče samo greste po, ko boste zamenjali slajd, samo pritisnite na slajd, da ga mi vidimo velikega. Ok. Ok, so, hello to everyone. I am Margareta and I am a creator and I am a patchwork teacher. Since I am probably among the oldest, if not the oldest, of this webinar, I would like to talk not only about the space, but also about the history on a bit old fashioned, personal and sentimental way. Uh, I was born here in Kran. All my life, I live and work here. In the time of my childhood, my city and all the region of Goryenska was known through the world as the center of the textile industry. The leading and for me the most important factory was textile industry where they produced cotton fabrics. It was their fabrics and later the fate of the factory, which was wrapped and closed during the transition from socialism to capitalism that marked my youth, my work, shaped my character and my view of the events around me. When I was young, my grandmother wore aprons made from their fabrics. My mother sewed summer dresses for me and the girls from the neighborhood from the red dotted fabric that neighbor brought from the factory. We hang factory calendars on the walls for the new year. And when I got my own little room, when I was 16, I made my first quilt from these patterns. After the first quilt, there came the second and third, and then more of them, also the others, and also by order. Within a few years, it was clear that I will never teach Slovenian, that my paths would meet elsewhere. Designing textiles became my professional activity, which I performed as a self-employed artist and a teacher of creative soul. Making quilts became my profession, and they were all made from that beautiful prints from that old factory. When I was told that the factory will be closed in 1991, I bought as many fabric as I can afford. Samples, collections, prints, and many different colors. Many boards that I kept then and for all these years, and they're still the preferred choice for my sewing projects. These two decades of the turn of the millennium were probably the saddest time for Slovenia. The time with the heritage of our fathers was sold off. One by one, the factories collapsed or the politicians sold them for little money and for their own interests. Interest in my quilts also died down during this time as the range of imported products was huge. I focused on another activity in the bolts of fabric rested and weighted. In, two, in 2012, I ran my first patchwork workshop. The interest did not even surprise me because as a patchwork designer, I gained not only a master title, but also my circle of users. Ladies that wishes to learn the skills of making quilts came from all over Slovenia. In 2013, I appealed to the women's sewing community to participate in the Slovenska Kutvanka project. Uh, on the Slovenian Cultural Day on the 8th of February, we gathered for the first time in my sewing room in Kran, where I presented the project and production process to those present. With the quilt made from many different prints from textile industry fabric, we wanted to pay our respect and gratitude 
to the workers and designers of the fabrics. I selected 750 different samplers from a stock of fabric, which women from different parts of Slovenia sewn into patchwork flowers. I sent the materials and instructions by mail to those from other regions. For the whole year, each Friday evening, we gathered in my sewing space to make this quilt. Former employees of the factory came to join us at our sewing sessions. They brought us fabrics that they still kept and told stories about the closure. 67 women from 16 different cities in Slovenia participated in the project. The quilt was hand sewn using the paper piecing technique with the traditional patchwork pattern of Grandma's flower garden. Each flower is made of seven hexagons, seven different fabric prints. It consists of 77 flowers placed on a light fabric base with a small floral pattern for which it was necessary to make and sew 1,154 hexagons. It is, quite, it is hand quilted on a stand. We donated the quilt to the Slovenian Ethnographic Museum for safekeeping in 2014. From that time on, I still organize patchwork and quilting workshops, not only workshops. I prepared the content for Little School of Patchwork, an education during which we meet once a week for the entire school year. Some of the ladies, Margarita, so Margarita, yeah. I'm so sorry. Can you just click on the photo that you're talking about? Yes. So we can see the photo. Yes, I did click. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Oh, excuse excuse me, may, may I intercept? Um, yes. uh, you're currently seeing your full screen, right? But because yes. you shared the PowerPoint presentation and not the full screen, um, we're only seeing your PowerPoint window, so your first slide. Okay. Um, and if you press escape and then just go through the slides. Just go to stop share and then again. Um, when uh, you, you could just click through the slides. Um, like this. It's, yes. It's, yeah. Okay, so you see the first slide and no other. Now we just see the first slide, yes. Okay, now second. Do you see second now? Yes, now we do. On your screen, yeah? Yes. Okay, and you saw uh, the first and not others. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. you were sharing um, just your full screen, uh, yeah. But all we saw was your PowerPoint window, not the sh not the projection that you saw. Uh -huh. um, it's a different kind of sharing, but for now, I think it's it would be easiest if you just ran through it like this. Okay. So just selecting uh, the slides yeah. as you go. Okay, so these are the calendars I was talking about. These are the bolt of the fabrics that I bought when the factory closed. And this is the first meeting when uh, when I published the invitation to make a Slovenian career. This is the material that the participants of the Slovenska Kurpanka project received the working construction. And uh, the community of the uh, women all over Slovenia that contributed with their work the quilt that was donated to the ethnographic museum with the documentation uh, with the with the um, related to our work and then the donation in 2014 i think i stopped somewhere here uh, so uh, as i said from that time i still organize the patchwork and quilting workshops not only workshops, I prepared the content for the Little School of Patchwork and education during which we meet once a week for the entire school year. Uh, some of the ladies uh, have been sewing with me for all the years since the beginning. Uh, others come and go or come back from time to time. To time. Every year we prepare a comprehensive annual exhibition. Last year I celebrated my first decade of teaching. For that occasion, uh, we organized 
two events. The first was the exhibition of grids made from the fabrics of textile industry, which I called Dedishchina Legacy. And the other was the exhibition grids from Slovenia at the international event for European the patchwork in France. That's the slide from the exhibition. Um, of course, gaining new knowledge and skin is probably the number one reason why women choose to participate at the workshops. During the process of learning and sewing together, they acquire not only new skills, but also new friendships. They become a part of community in which they can develop their creativity and forget the burdens of everyday life. In conclusion, let me briefly answer some of the questions asked. Our sewing room is located in the old town of Center Kran, in the space where our ethno gallery used to operate. It is 17 square meters in size and could accommodate up to 30 participants. I finance it myself with income from courses and workshops. I use my uh, Facebook profile and occasionally advertising for promotion. The most reliable way to get women to join this uh, this uh, uh, workshops are those who have already attended the courses. Um, I believe the next school year will be the last year of my teaching. The question that is stays open and worries me most is what about the words of my fabrics that are still writing to the song. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Margarita. Uh, even we had, even if we had a, a few of the technical problems, uh, I think yeah. it was uh, very okay. well presented. So I hope you can stay at the end, and we'll ask you a few questions as well. And now uh, to Estonia Studio Labus, who is the artist-run residency program uh, dedicated to fiber and textile artists who seek to promote um, an atmosphere of creativity, experimentation, and reflection for artists working in the textile field. Merilis is uh, with us. You have a very beautiful space. I get to know it uh, from Susanna Sereja, who is coming to the art residency to Kran uh, next week. And she told me she was um, a guest uh, in Tallinn. So she was talking very warmly uh, about you and the residency. So I welcome you to show it uh, and present it to us as well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Can you all hear me well? I hope so. I'm very happy to be here and um, also share uh, about the residency doings. As I uh, heard from the other presenters, all the stories are very different and I hope also mine will uh, perhaps give something interesting to the listener. So let's put a slideshow. Can you can you see it well? Do you see the first slide? Unfortunately, we see all again the whole grid. Um, mm -hmm. Can you put the slideshow again? Yes. Um, when sharing a screen, does it ask you if you want to share uh, a window or the whole screen? It doesn't ask me this question. But um, I will figure figure this out, perhaps like this. Oh, uh, it works. This yes, is, this is good. Amazing. So hello, everybody. 
My name is Marie-Lise steinfeld -Krins. I'm an artist, a researcher, and a writer. And uh, the, the idea to open up the space uh, came from different kind of uh, questions, needs, and observations. Uh, so I was uh, still uh, studying contemporary art in the Estonian Academy of Arts in the master's program. And uh, I opened up my studio because uh, it's a very important step of uh, artist uh, professional life to have a, a good space where to work and concentrate and uh, leave all the worries uh, and problems behind the door. So therefore I opened up my studio and I could uh, notice uh, very quickly that uh, as I'm working behind one tool, let it be a, a loom or a knitting machine or a, or a tufting frame or whatever, uh, then as, as you all know, textile making uh, textile is quite a long um, time consuming practice. So therefore, I could see that all these um, tools and the resources are waiting. But um, I really like to share. And I believe that these kind of tools and resources should be um, shared, utilized. And also, if as I was uh, at the moment, um, uh, preparing for my next uh, solo exhibition, uh, the, the, the works are really time consuming, you are there in the studio mostly alone, so therefore I decided that uh, as, I, as in my BA studying textile art in Tartu in University of Palace, uh, I, I really enjoyed working together with other people, other people who are passionate about textile uh, and uh, their amazing resources also in regard of giving advice, solving problems, but uh, also the uh, different uh, variety of topics also people share when they work together in the same space. So therefore I decided to open up the studio, uh, not only work there alone by myself uh, but uh, I invited other people also to come and work there um, so my studio is located in the capital of Estonia Tallinn it's in an um, old industrial area um, and um, I have a um, big variety of different kind of looms, tufting frames, embroidery frames, tapestry frames, knitting machines, sewing machines, all, all different uh, things. And um, uh, I thought maybe opening up a residency is also a good way of informal learning. So this uh, space, the Studio Labus, is, um, is my studio, but the doors are open. This is the, this is the main concept of uh, this space and doings. And, um, and the three key words I would really like to emphasize, and I also heard also the other um, presenters here today uh, were knocking on these three keywords is that um, I really believe in informal learning. I really believe in exchange of knowledge, experience and skills. And, um, and also as this um, studio is an artist run uh, space, it is very flexible and uh, the main idea is not to have a, a professional residency and have a, 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 all these amazing tools and opportunities and funds, but to, to go in more in that way that uh, um, the residents who will come and work in the studio, they 
they also become friends and uh, it's a, I think it's a great platform in that sense. So the residency program, um, I founded it together uh, with my partner Francesco Rosso as I've studied textile art and contemporary art. I'm also in the Estonian Artist Union, in the Estonian um, Textile Artist Union. And uh, Francesco, uh, I decided to invite Francesco also to uh, run it is because uh, even though he has studied contemporary art and animation, uh, and he's uh, Italian, not Estonian. So I, I thought that uh, this kind of um, uh, a second pair of eyes helps also to put the program of the residency together. Um, maybe about also funding. I really like that the other participants also talked about funding. In Estonia, it's a bit more simple, simpler for the professional artists to get the funding. So therefore, actually one part of the program uh, when the artist comes, then I um, also go over with them how, for example, Estonian art uh, scene works, all the bureaucratic part of it, the funding part, uh, also how to, how to reply for open calls, what kind of documents are needed, just to give uh, an overview of a real, how, how, um, if somebody wants to work in Estonia as a professional artist, what kind of uh, what kind of information is needed? So also, I would like to emphasize that I I really believe in sharing all kind of knowledge uh, and not only working independently. So here you can see a couple of pictures. The room is um, about 35 square meters. Uh, I have quite a big abundance of materials and tools. Um, and uh, what could I tell a bit more? It's, uh, it's great what you have uh, said until now, so don't worry. Um, I think your photos tell even more than your words could have uh, because it's a very lovely space uh, and we can get the idea of the sort of the tranquility a person gets when working with textiles. As you said, it's a very slow process, so People are working on the slow art when doing big textile pieces. And I think at your space, this is really possible. Uh, if you have uh, finished your presentation, um, we can uh, listen to Lucia and then get back uh, to you with some questions that can open the discussion for us. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Mary. Um, so again, uh, we are back in uh, Slovenia, uh, just in a few months, uh, a new space will open. It's going to be a very huge space in Ljubljana with a lot of different um, production labs. And one of them is Textile Lab and uh, it's called Rock uh, Creative Hub. Uh, it used to be uh, a factory, as a lot of other spaces um, used to be also like an old uh, kind of a re real estate problem, maybe. And uh, now it's getting a new look, and Lucia will um, give us a short introduction to the place that it's opening, I believe, in September. October. In October. Okay. Hi, Lucia. Please. Hi. Uh, I will share my screen and I hope you can all see it. Yes. Okay. At least no technical difficulties this time. Uh, and if I go to the next screen, you see it? Yes. Perfect. 
Okay, uh, thank you Zala for inviting us to, to the presentation. Um, my name is Lucia, I'm project manager here in Center Rock, and I will uh, quickly introduce you the story of how we uh, came to be. So what we see in the picture is uh, Center Rook, or uh, formerly known as Rook Factory, which was the symbol of the cult Rook bicycles and is the most important piece of 20th century uh, industrial heritage in Ljubljana. So thanks to the way that it's being restored, which is uh, happening as we speak, and the plans for the future, the building will retain uh, its own original function, uh, of course, updated to the 21st century. So it will be serving as a public production space for the cultural and creative industries with an emphasis on design and architecture. So uh, to quickly go through the process, um, the, the whole development of Center Rock uh, is highly participatory. In the aftermath of the economic crisis in 2008, the city of Ljubljana took part in the Second Chance project, which was funded by the European Union to evaluate the initial plans for the site. So this project evolved over 300 stakeholders. Uh, so since 2012, this new vision has been tested and refined by more than 6,000 users and partners in the Rook Lab. Uh, as you, uh, so this Rook Lab was set up as a pilot project to test and develop the test programs, partnerships, and businesses models for the new Center Rock. So um, this small container uh, here that you can see in the, bot uh, in the bottom, this is Rock Lab, which was the smallest fab lab uh, in Europe, expanding uh, over uh, 29 square meters. So what's happening now is that we are becoming the biggest uh, public funded makerspace in Europe, expanding over 8,000 uh, 8, and a half square meters of uh, different spaces. So uh, based on uh, the field of work, and continuously upgraded visions before the concept of Center Rook uh, was again submitted to review and approval by 40 stakeholders in 2019. In June uh, 2021, a new creative center called Center Rook was established by the municipality of Ljubljana. So what uh, we are most proud of that we, uh, we are still, uh, you know, reconstructing the building. We have not yet uh, inhabited it, but we, uh, through the pilot project of uh, Rook Lab, uh, we actively engaged with the public, with the users, uh, with our uh, designers. And what we are most proud of is that uh, over 70% of Rook Lab users uh, over the years were women. Um, so these are the renders of the new uh, renovated uh, Center Rock factory. The original state you can see uh, behind me on, on the wall. Uh, so over the um, over 1000 square meters uh, at the bottom will be production spaces. Uh, this will be eight different production spaces expanding from the cookery lab to the biggest one of them all uh, will be the textile lab. Uh, so we will also have a recycling center, 3D lab, electro lab, wood lab, metal lab, green lab, glass and ceramic lab. And the newest addition to this collection is also a jewelry lab. Uh, so uh, the textile lab, if we maybe focus on uh, that for a little bit, will be uh, uh, in uh, three parts. So we will have a traditional sewing lab. We will also have the textile design lab uh, where we will cover everything from weaving to uh, textile printing to, um, to knitting. And of course, we will also have the, the dark room and uh, a room for direct textile printing uh, facilities. 
uh, also accommodating to the whole infrastructure, I would like to emphasize that we will have over uh, 19 uh, individual workspaces for different creatives who want to develop their own projects or product ideas uh, so they can get uh, the space for free of charge for up to three years where they can work and uh, be supported by the production facilities uh, downstairs. We also have the residential program, which uh, includes five individual uh, working and living apartments. Uh, so we are uh, very eager to um, international exchange of creatives. Um, to maybe quickly introduce what have been what have we been doing the, this past uh, ten years. Even though we were in this small makerspace, uh, Fab Lab, we were able to actively engage with different designers and tackle different uh, social and uh, design uh, issues that arose. So one of the projects was design disability, uh, which was addressing the, uh, the expression of individuality and uh, physical needs of uh, people who were who are differently abled. And then we are also proud of being a part of the She Makes project and the consortium, uh, uh, the, the, the clubs and uh, everything else that they have. So this She Makes project uh, is uh, basically, their aim is to empower uh, future female innovators in the textile and fashion industry. What we have done here is to invite different uh, experts from all over the world to prepare uh, different seminars and workshops. So we focused on the cellulosic and biomaterials. Uh, so the, the students who were participating in these workshops learned how to grow uh, kombucha or make bioplastic or other biomaterials. Uh, one of the latest projects that we've done was Artisa's Hackathon, uh, where we offered the mentorship and uh, support for the project ideas of migrants living in Slovenia. Here we had the chance to work with uh, Olga Tisler and Maribel Brisenio. Um, so Olga uh, wanted to create this uh, story of uh, nomadic textiles. Uh, she's from Kazakhstan and she wanted to share her uh, culture and um, textile uh, arts. And uh, Maribel, she's from Venezuela, and she wanted to uh, create um, a porta perfume uh, called Blizo Sebe, which is a ceramic uh, uh, pendulum um, that has essential oils and can serve as aromatherapy. And uh, the project that we successfully finished uh, last week uh, was called Act and Art for Positive Social Change, which was a series of trainings for youth workers who want to work with the uh, socially excluded by the system groups. Uh, so we're talking about different, uh, with different backgrounds, migrants, refugees, and asylum seekers. And they've, uh, they've gone through training and uh, the, they, they were asked to do the follow-up activities and the follow-up activities were very practical. Uh, so they had uh, different workshops on the Afghan traditional uh, embroidery uh, techniques to ceramics, to creating uh, felt brooches and pictures and, and so on. Uh, and also macrame and many others. So here we actively engaged with uh, over 24 uh, migrant, refugee and asylum seekers uh, living in Slovenia who uh, went through these uh, different hands-on trainings uh, where we presented uh, the techniques. And uh, this is actually uh, a very quick introduction and overview of Centrok. 
uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, Zala's questions to maybe explain everything uh, later. Thank you. Thank you, Lucia. Um, so yes, we have uh, a good uh, half an hour to uh, talk about some other um, ideas, directions that we that you haven't already. And I would like to start with Alessandra. Um, I think you are um, the most experienced, or your space is the most experienced in, um, so to say, um, the, the successful story of Italian um, kind of a region that was also um, in the past um, intertwined with uh, like the textiles and now you're continuing this heritage in a contemporary way. So I would like to ask you if one would be to open um, a textile production space anew what would you say it's the most important thing? Is it materials, materials and tools that you already have, or is it a space that you might need to have? Um, is there a leading person, a community manager that is the most important, um, or are there people? Is there a community that needs to be established if you want to start a successful textile production space? Well, this is not a simple question at all, <laughs> because uh, I have to say, I have to admit that we are still struggling a lot to survive because uh, as since we are completely independent, we are still trying to understand which activities work better and in order to find a balance uh, which, of course, need to be also on an, an economical level. So uh, I would say that um, for us, for our story, it, it was fundamental the connection with the, with the um, uh, place. So also the um, um, uh, the fact that we highlight a lot the, um, the the link with the heritage of the of the of the place, the fact that we are doing something uh, uh, that it's important for the city itself. So this is what also give uh, gives us uh, the hope of growing in the future because we really still need to grow. To, and to gain more support. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would say that, uh, but this of course depends on the, the area where you want to open the space. For us, this was the main strength and we always try to focus the point on this. Um, and okay, also this- so... Yes, please continue. No, I was saying that also this, the fact that we are in the textile district also help us to have uh, availability of materials. We don't have the materials in the space, but we know easily where we can find them in, in the district. So also the, mm -hmm. the, the, the availability of the material is, is important. And then of course, uh, it's important to keep the place alive, so open to the people, to the community. And I have to say that we are more focused on the an international network, also because um, we don't have a regular um, public who, uh, in, in, who leave the space. The space is uh, lived mostly by us, by our residents, which mm -hmm. are few, few people. Then. Of course, it's open, but we don't have uh, co work, uh, regular co workers. So it's also important to find a balance also in this, in this sense with the community. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Mar uh, Margaret, um, you mentioned that you have a lot of tools and materials and that you're kind of the only one the only makerspace um, in Iceland that has these tools um, and machines. So is this kind of an advantage for you? Is this the benefit, this benefits your purpose probably? Yes, I would say so. Um, it makes us kind of 
um, get people all around Iceland to come to our lab. It's also um, the space where we get the students uh, in to learn on the machines. So they know that later on they can actually come here and use it. So even though they finish school, they still have facilities to use. But I would say it is an advantage to have machines that uh, nobody else in the country has. But it's also, we can see that there are people coming from Denmark and other where else to here to use the machines because they are not available anywhere else. So I think it's actually inspiring other labs even to, to do the same. And this, this, this is super amazing that people fly from Denmark to Iceland to find yeah. something they, they don't have. Yes, so I think <laughs> we, we get um, a lot of also requests on the machines that we have. So there are people thinking about getting them as well anywhere else. I would assume that the, the whole Iceland is a, of a size of Prato. Um, being the second biggest uh, city in uh, Tuscany. Um, and you mentioned, Alessandra, that there is not a lot of community as such to be building this space you have. So, Margaret, how is your experience in that you, you are gathering people around your place with all of the programs that you're having? Yes, it's, it's a bit different, I think, because the community around Plentos is really small. So the people coming from the local area is maybe a little bit limited. But it also means that we get um, other people. So the artist residency is also really huge here in, in using the lab and then also getting uh, more workshops and more like groups to come and use it for like over time, over a week or something. It's more kind of how we, how we work than people coming in daily a little bit. Okay, um, you've mentioned the, the school, um, the university and schools. Uh, Lucia, how is with Ljubljana University? Are you connected with the uh, faculties uh, that deal with textiles and design? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, uh, University of Ljubljana is one of our strategic partners. So the associated uh, faculties uh, so from uh, design to academy and so on, will have their own uh, lecture room uh, for the interdisciplinary project. So uh, the students and professors will be able to use their facilities for their uh, educational purposes, as well as we will create uh, a program called uh, Mladi Rok, uh, in English, Young Rok, which will be intended for uh, students who just finished uh, studying to get their creative start. So kind of the one year uh, scholarship program uh, where they can uh, you know, develop their ideas with uh, the safety net of you know, falling on a pillow if the idea does not uh, project well. Okay. Okay, uh, Kati, you being from a small city, a very small city, but still having so much of the people understanding textile art in Shkofialoka, it's also a big benefit. Would you say um, that if this place would be in a different city, it would be not understood that well, or it's everywhere it's the same? What, what, what's your opinion? Hmm. I mean, sometimes we also see that uh, also locals even maybe didn't know about the creativity, but people from Ljubljana, they do. So it really depends. And these uh, networks are really uh, interesting to observe. Uh, but for us, of course, the um, local community and all the knowledge that is still here and this identity, let's say, connected with textiles in wider community is important. And uh, maybe in the presentation, I didn't mention um, or didn't emphasize uh, that also these educational um, programs or uh, content that uh, we already implemented and now that we have more space would focus more on uh, is important uh, to, to keep the knowledge here. And also as the universities uh, were mentioned, uh, we see that um, 
sometimes students uh, in the textile design uh, studies, they don't have this uh, really practical knowledge or um, they don't have the opportunity to meet actual skills connected with textiles. So this we see the opportunity also for our um, masters, let's say, uh, the, the designers that really are the masters of the skills also to share this. But um, I don't know, each, each community is different, uh, each space is different, uh, but I believe that, of course, the shape of the hub or all the activities or all the people that are connected in the space, of course, re resonates with the community. So, um, of course, creativity would be very different if, if it would be in Ljubljana or in Tui or anywhere else, but uh, um, I believe it's important um, that we admit that we struggle um, and we uh, are um, that we notice all the challenges and opportunities that we have and to react on them. So, yeah. Okay, thank you, Kati. You mentioned the um, programs of learning, of education, and I think, Margarita, you're doing such a wonderful job with um, learning activities, informal learning activities at your Desetnica uh, gallery or your, your, your space. It's, it's a very com commu communal um, space, and uh, mainly your uh, participants are women that are probably already stopped that already stopped working so how do you think it um, kind of affects their day-to-day -day lives that they are involved in a in, in a group in a community in doing something with their hands how, how, how do you feel that this affects them um uh, I think that the sewing in community, uh, as uh, if we are looking at the quilting and patchwork, it is um, uh, well known in the history because uh, quilts were made in a group of, a group of ladies uh, centuries ago. Uh, we uh, even have an expression in quilting terms, which is called quilting B for the group of ladies that works together. Uh, I think that uh, most of the ladies that come to learn uh, uh, to sew quilts uh, are not only looking for skills, but they are also looking for a community, for friendships, for, for, for um, talking to somebody who shared their interest. I think that's the main, main um, reason for joining the, the workshops. Um, uh, it is very interesting for me if I am looking for the the um, uh, the occupation that the ladies that are coming uh, to learn uh, are uh, where they where they work. They are mostly mostly working as a counter. So the more uh, the more the uh, uh, everyday job they do is difficult. Uh, more they want to uh, rest somewhere, more they want to um, uh, create something different and to forget the burdens of the everyday's life. Um, but there is also an important difference, I think, between the skills that they are learning, because patchwork is mostly about skills it's not so much about art i think because um, most of the organization in europe are uh, joining the ladies that uh, have a lot of skills and very little organizations for patchwork and creating in europe is art organization so that's the difference i believe uh thank you uh you mentioned uh like this calm and tranquility that women need when they come to work uh, with patchwork and sewing. And it reminds me of um, what uh, Marilee said with her place, like some, so textile art or working with textiles, even textile craft, so also acquiring skills um, needs or has this kind of a, um, so it's imp the, 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 the idea of, repetitiveness and kind of a um, 
so the skills need to be people don't need a lot of skills but if, if the, the skills that they have they need to like they need to be the best at them to work for themselves so for example if you have a person of, on the residency and they have uh, their uh, they're working on a, on a piece they need they need to have a very zen environment i would say um to, to not to be disturbed and um to kind of have its own um, environment that it's all kind of the, everything fits together and i think Marilis, your your space is this how how f much um, so were you thinking of this kind of a uh, uh, environment when you were building it were you thinking how it should look like how the light should look like how the access to the water where it should be and so on what, what was on your mind when you were building it did you uh, were thinking about yourself as an artist so what do you need when you're working or what, what was on your mind no, at first, for sure, it was what I was needing. But uh, what I was needing was also working among other women. I think this is very important. And then you have to have a nice space uh, to provide these conditions. I don't know, at least you have to have a couch where you can have a nap when you are a bit tired of all this weaving. and. Uh, uh, and other worries and um, but also luckily this space I have it's very lucky in that sense of course you have to make your own luck but um, oppose uh, to the space we have a natural bog which has very nice uh, pine forestry and you can have nice walks there and then the other side of the house is um, is a industrial area where they're mining sand. So it's a huge sand quarry with a lot of lakes and, and um, very tranquil spaces. So this, uh, uh, yes, I think also the, um, the environment is very important or at least uh, to for the residents to make sure that they understand where they are i think this question is very very important and try to take maximum out of this space can you and alessandra and margaret tell us a little bit about your residences are there open calls available um, open for everybody from all over the world when are they so marilis can you start you have your Mm -hmm. You're not unmuted. <laughs> um, yes, I have an open uh, all year long uh, open call. Uh, but uh, the one thing we do is we select quite, uh, we put a lot of emphasis on selecting people. We get a lot of uh, requests from other artists who work in other mediums, like sound and dance. but. Uh, I would put more emphasis on the um, of the background skill to be textile or textile related, because very important part of this residency is also to open up the local uh, textile artist studios and make this connection bridge. So the people coming in, they could uh, also visit other Estonian textile artists, and um, and the Estonian textile artists could also see other people working in the same medium because in that part of the world we really don't have uh, tech, uh, residencies concentrating on textile artists how long are the the, the residencies what's the duration uh, the shortest has been uh, two weeks but i think one month should be minimum yes okay um alessandra uh, so Lotto Zero also has uh, open call or it's uh, it works on invitation? <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, we are not able to um, organize open call. It depends on the um, cultural funding that we manage to get. So we constantly apply for 
cultural project, but um, so far we um, we didn't manage to to develop a project with an open open call. So uh, we received uh, application request for um, residency, which require a fee. But one once a year we manage to invite one artist. Uh, also connected to some um, cultural funding from the Tuscany region. So um, once a year, there is this um, opportunity to get this uh, funding connected to a project uh, linked to the contemporary art scene of the area. So in that case, we are able to invite ourselves uh, an artist to stay with us and the length of the residency can vary it depends we had uh, even a one week residencies up to three months so it depends but most of, of our residencies are um, paid residencies by the artists Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, Margaret, how is, what's the strategy on the residences at your space? Uh, yeah, so there's like uh, open application all year round. Uh, so artists, they apply um, with a kind of, they propose a project that they want to work on um, with it. And um, it's kind of for a one month uh, residency. So that's the minimum. And then they can actually stay for up to, I think six months has been the longest. Um, yeah, but yes, it's also uh, artists pay, mm -hmm. pay to use the residency. Um, yeah. Lucia, you have somehow another strategy. So you have um, opened a call for the organizations, for non-governmental organizations to work with you. So you provide space for free and the other organizations should pay um, like uh, subsistence materials um, and no. No, no, it's okay. So please explain. It's a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, so what we actually have is every year we open a program partnership call offering three different uh, partnerships. So one is the purchase of educational uh, trainings, work, hands-on workshops, and so on, where we finance everything from the development, organization, materials, uh, author's fees, and so on. And then the second uh, we have is the co-production, where we uh, kind of split the, uh, the, the costs, and then we have the, the hosting. Uh, where we, uh, you know, give give the space, but uh, not pay for the uh, honorarium or execution of the uh, activities. Uh, but with the partnership call, we also have uh, a call for not just NGOs, but uh, other organizations. And especially we are eager to connect with other makerspaces, labs, fab labs, uh, in Europe, where we offer the either staff exchange residency and also study visits and uh, proposals for the residency exchanges, where the idea is that we would send someone from Slovenia, to example, to Lotto Zero, and Lotto Zero will send someone uh, to, to Slovenia to have this. Lucia, can I ask you, I know the open call was, um was already it did it, it, it closed the, the partnership how much because you have eight different labs how much were, was their interest in the textile lab uh, textile lab is the most pop popular lab okay that's good to hear. with the program partnerships and with other eu uh, projects that we were invited to participate and overall, uh, our community, when it comes to fashion designers, textile designers, and especially student support, is in the uh, textile uh, sphere. Okay, thank you. Um, I have one not connected question now. Um, 
it's about the leading person of the space. So the community manager of the space. And um, I, I know, for example, that Kati is not an artist, but she's the, the, the lead person. So Kati, could you, so I will ask you first, um, how, how much, how important is this person? How important do you think you are if there wouldn't be you? Do you think the space will be organized as it is? Will the artists have their things that they need? Will there be collaborations? Will there be some financing options and so on? Uh, yes, I'm ethnology, so uh, I'm not the artist. Um, I mean, um, from the beginning, we started working as a collective, as a group. Uh, and all the decisions are commonly made with all the members, but um, in the sense of uh, um, communicating and uh, all the logistics and uh, all the PR and uh, all the financing and bureaucracy thing, I believe my role is very important. Um, also in the sense that um, designers can focus on their work and uh, they are not worried about the pay bills and uh, applied uh, applications and uh, so on. Um, but at the same time, uh, with this group of women, uh, of course, we are really tightly connected and I don't see myself as a, as a bureaucrat here, uh, but also I, I try to participate in also the content sense and as ethnologists to bring something different also in all the topics that we are dealing. Um, uh, I believe, yeah, the coordinator, let's say it's important, um, but you know, it's, it's always the human factor is crucial in all the things. Uh, so um, I'm really happy that I can be part of Kreatunice and to collaborate and also to learn because um, yeah, the textiles is a very, very wide uh, space. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, I'm really happy that I can participate. Thank you. Alessandra already mentioned what were the immediate, um, what was the immediate response to COVID crisis uh, so that you were working on the um, Instagram galleries, uh, exhibitions with other partners in the European uh, funded project, if I understood it right. Um, maybe can you tell us, uh, maybe you first, Alessandra, but also I would like to hear from all of you just for the end. Um, would you say that there are some long term consequences on the space and its community because of COVID? Uh... Well, um, we noticed that uh, just after the um, the, um, the, the first uh, dramatic phase, uh, there was a um, desire to um, to participate in live events. So uh, when we proposed for the first time after the COVID break, um, a program of uh, talks, uh, workshop, and physical events in this space, we received uh, a strong participation. But then uh, we had some um, unpredictable uh, um, uh, reactions from the public. Uh, so I would say that uh, after the COVID, uh, um, people uh, uh, change a little bit their habits. And so only now after two, two years, we are um, um, noticing again a regular participation. So we had a, an irregular um, feedback to our activities for, for a while, for a period. But now people are starting again to regularly participate after two years, I would say. At the same time, uh, during the COVID, we initiated uh, several online projects that actually were successful and uh, partly we managed to keep. So for example, the interview to some artists that became uh, 
part of our website. So a section called portraits dedicated to interviews to designers and artists that we are uh, still um, keeping alive. And uh, also uh, as regard the online exhibition on Instagram. So something of the big effort uh, started during the COVID um, left some um, uh, good practices. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would any other uh, would like to give us some ideas what was left from COVID and what was a good practice that is still there that you're still using? Well, uh, also the, um, this project called Directory, which is a kind of a catalog of sustainable brands, sustainable local brands who work uh, uh, in fashion. Uh, so we started to um, find them and uh, host them in our website in a section dedicated to them called directory. It's a real directory of sustainable brands that anyone can, uh, can search, can look at, can buy their products. So it was a way to also support them in that period. And now it's a network with whom we are still collaborating for some physical events, some talks. So. It's something that still exists in our website, and uh, it's a tool for doing research and uh, be in contact with them. Okay, we have um, had our first biennial in 2021, and it was just, it was after COVID, but there was still a lot of COVID, of course, the preparation started in the COVID crisis. Uh, so we decided to have a lot of exhibitions outside. And uh, luckily, this stayed with us and we still have a lot of exhibitions outside. And today, as um, Katia already mentioned, we are opening the exhibition uh, at uh, Yesenice in this really big chimney. Um, and it will be there the whole summer. So it will be for all. Um, of the people to see from outside. So the out, outdoor um, uh, venues uh, were on our minds and are still are luckily um, for COVID. Um, so um, this was the invitation for everybody to join us in, in, the, in the evening. Um, of course, for all of the international guests, I thank you very much for being here. Um, and also, I invite you to come to Biennial. It's open until the 10th of August. Uh, we have a minute or two. Um, maybe you want to exchange some ideas between yourselves or say something at the end. But just say bye bye.